Hi! Surprise! <laughs> this is Ariane Arsenault from La Fée de la Mer and I have a great surprise for you guys. I am in Vancouver and I am at Belinda Williams' home. If you don't know Belinda, she is the creator of the Kaleidoscope Technique uh, for soap making and she's the owner of Love Your Suds. So I'll let Belinda introduce herself furthermore. So hi, I'm Belinda from Love Your Suds, as you said. So I primarily make uh, soaps, but I'm really excited to uh, learn with Ariane today uh, because I would love to learn how to successfully make <laughs> bath bombs with details in them. Like I've made them with the round molds, but um, I tried a couple of times with some of them with the more detailed like impressions. And I just found that they were really, um, they kind of didn't hold the details and became quite crumbly. So when Ariane yeah. was coming here, I was like, oh, wow, she's amazing, <laughs> obviously. Um, and so, yeah, today uh, she's going to help me. Yeah. So I'm bit. actually here in Vancouver because both Belinda and I will be speakers at the HBBG conference. Uh, and one of the topics that I'm going to be teaching is how to make bath bombs with Lee Choi. We're a dynamic duo. <laughs> so Lee Choi is the owner of the Bath Bomb Press and we will be teaching about bath bomb making. And I also have a soap topic. So when I asked Belinda what she'd like me to bring along with me to Vancouver, she's like, well, actually, <laughs> could you help me with bath bombs? And I was like, thrilled. So welcome along and let's test if my humid climate <laughs> formula works here in Vancouver. And it's raining today. It's, so it's <laughs> raining. It's pouring rain. <laughs> so it's a great day to test. Yeah. Um, and I also live in humid climate, except in winter, it's not this wet where I live. So. Yeah, in uh, we, we call it rain Coover for a reason. It rains here <laughs> quite a lot. So it's a different type of wetness. Yes. But so let's put it to the test. Let's go. I've prepared the baking soda and we've already pre-measured the citric acid and now we're making our wedding agent mixture. And I'm just adding this blend of essential oils that Belinda had and it smells really good. Do you remember what's in it? It's um, citrus. It definitely had it had lemon, it had lime, lavender, geranium, pine and pine and rosemary. Oh, and rosemary. Yeah. Okay. It smells really good. And uh, this is a, a small test batch that is going to be for personal use. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, but if you do use a blend and you intend to sell bath bombs, make sure that you know exactly uh, the percentages of your blend. Particularly with the lime, right? Yeah, lime and citruses can be phototoxic. Um, so, you definitely want to be careful with those. Voila. Uh, we're going to use a clay to color this batch. I've been experimenting with clays to make bath bombs recently, and I was telling that to Belinda. And I got really excited because I've been hoarding this brambleberry clay for a while for the perfect opportunity, and this is it. Yeah, so this is purple Brazilian clay by Brambleberry. So just turn on the scale, and we'll add in just a little, a little bit of clay. And I usually use white kaolin clay, but any kaolin clay will do, or any fine clay. It helps to harden the bath bombs, actually. Um, some people prefer to use cream of tartar. I sometimes use it, but mostly I use clays. Okay. White clay, but in this case, I'm coloring. And would you say that's like maybe like a teaspoon or like half a teaspoon? I always measure my recipes by weight. I yeah. never go by teaspoon cups okay, or so anything. Okay, so it's four grams. Yeah, it's okay. four grams for Perfect. this. And this, this whole batch is about 500 grams, so it's, it, you don't need a lot. Okay. Cool. Uh, you could add more, but like I would say like start low. Yeah because you don't want to have all of this clay residue in the bottom of your bath yeah. water at the end. And with this amount, you'll get a nice, like kind of pastel clay color, which is in the perfect. end. Yes, which is perfect. So it's a, there's a few lumps in here. Should we sift You can it? just, no, okay. I don't sift. Okay, perfect. I don't have time for that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> they will break up, you know, as we mix. Yeah. If you have a really clumpy batch of baking soda, you can totally sift it. Yeah. Uh, but I find that this just like throws dust everywhere in the air. So I don't sift most of the time. All right, I'm just gonna add the wetting agent. And I like to scoop up some powder to get everything that was in there. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. Nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. And since we measure everything precisely, if some of it stays in the beaker, then our recipe will be off. Ah. Yeah. I can scooch this away to yep. cleaning? Yeah. 
And I try and see how I like... You're like really yes. like kneading it or... When I make bigger batches, I will use a stand mixer to mix. Yeah. But I always finish the mixing process with my hands to make sure that if there's any clumps of white baking powders, leftovers, um, that I will actually get rid of them in this process. But right now you can see there's barely anything. Yeah, it looks good. It looks nice. Oh, there's one there. Yeah, there's one there. <laughs> so just pinch it off and... Oh, wait, that smells so good. It does smell really yeah. good. I'm just gonna go quickly rinse my gloves, put my mask on, because we're gonna be taking out the sodium lauryl sulfur acetate, commonly called SLSA, which is our foaming agent. And since it's very volatile and airborne, uh, we're gonna be like coughing like crazy if we don't protect our lungs. <laughs> so we'll be right back. Let's take out the SLSA now that we're all masked up and uh, <laughs> ready to add it. What I do is I add my citric acid on top so it kind of just holds it in there. Yeah, it holds it in. And then we don't have all of this SLSA everywhere in the room. Always make sure that you start on low because mm -hmm. you don't want all of this flying up in the air. And again, um, you could sift the SLSA, but I would recommend not to because it's so airborne. I prefer to pinch the little bits that are left in the mix. And, um, just like squish it between my fingers and then I get a better feel if my mixture is ready wet enough and holding how do you tell exactly is it just you grab it yeah. you squish it and then you wiggle it okay <laughs> and see how it, it holds nicely together. like so grab it squeeze it so the molds we're going to be testing are as I said these that I brought with me from Savonnerie La Bulle because I'm really Excited to try these out. We have like two that are kind of moon press type yeah. molds, and this one that is a little ice cream cone. And then we have some of Belinda's molds that she already had. There are also 3D printed molds, and since she was having issues with those, yeah, we're going to be testing those as well. So let's let's start with this and see how it holds. I don't want to overpack, so I'm just going to make sure that it's like flat, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to bring the other part of the mold on it, and then. And you can do it just like this. You just press on the mold. And then this one will, I think, will release from, yeah, from either side. So let's remove the sleeve. You have a little bit of, yeah. yeah. I think this mixture is maybe a little dry. but oh, it looks good on that side. The other side is good. And we didn't have a little clump of, of something white. So let's start it. Let's start again. Try and make it a little bit more wet. See, that but side this is side good. is like looking perfect yeah so maybe and then when we flip it this side is like kind of soft and not defined so i'll just squish yeah. it back in because nice and i've never worked with this mold either so whoops it, see it got stuck so. you know it's funny like i actually just use them as like little mixes yeah like measuring I've, containers yeah. but look Nice. It's actually a cute little size too. It's a really nice little size. Oh, so perfect. These are really cute. And then they should pop right out. Oh, I love it. So this mix works really great with metal molds. <laughs> and then we'll make another batch and we'll adjust for... You want to start... You want to try yeah, pressing some? I'll give it a go. So you, you have another set. Just dive in. Mm -hmm. So I don't twist them. I okay. don't screw them in. I just like... Push them in, yeah. Oh la la! Nice. And they're just eek. flip it in. Eek. They release so easily this way. Yeah, that was really, really good. So Belinda is now mixing this batch, um, and we're using a different formula that is actually meant for vacuum molds, uh, but it should work better with 3D printed molds as it's a little more wet. Mm -hmm. Belinda had this yellow Brazilian clay, so we've already added that to the baking powder. So I go around? Yeah. Oh, look at that yellow color. Yeah. So I want to try this one again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that helps yeah. to get like definition from the, the top part of this mold. 
because bath bomb powder gets everywhere. <laughs> so this was the bottom, which is Ooh, looking really yeah. nice right now. And a moment of truth. Oh, oh yay! <laughs> Perfect. Success. So a wetter mix is better for 3D printed molds. So now you can do your gems. Okay. Successfully, I'll I'll give you this formula that you can Thank use. Thank you. And know that this formula also works very well uh, with metal molds. You can you can try yeah. it, and it also works very well with vacuum molds, the ones that are made of a thick plastic that is like heat vacuum form. Oops, I didn't put enough in there. <laughs> And I want to try my yes. ice cream because we didn't try that one yet. It's so cute. And then you can pick any of the 3D molds that you have on the table, either mine or yours, and you can try it too. I think you should try the gem. Yeah, <laughs> I think so because just because I was on a, I was on a mission. Ooh, la nice. la. You don't need to like if you want to just crumble back in. Yeah, because to make the other shape, but I just wanted to test for texture. And when you crumble it, don't squish it. Just like kind of like. Make it fluffy. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so let's try this ice cream. Although it smells nothing like ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> How did you tell which was the top and bottom on this? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, well, I mean, they're the same. Yeah. But I meant like top and bottom from when I filled it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So fill it all the way up to the top and then make a little mound on it and we'll see how that works. So that's, look, it's kind of chunky. Should I start again? Because it's not really yeah, fluffy. Yeah, well, try it. We'll okay. see. We'll see. Making is about experimenting. So that's true. Okay. Okay. Oh, I definitely don't have as much as you did. <laughs> oh, yeah. You could, like, unmold it and make another one, but, you know, press Let's it and see, see what happens. The thing is, you'll probably just have a, a thinner um, like ridge, I think ridge. Like, yeah. <laughs> edge. <clears throat> and once you have your perfect favorite size, you will weigh that. Yeah. And, and then, then each bath bomb you will fill on your scale. Okay. So these are all new molds, which I do not know like how much to fill at. Oh, so cute. Look at that. Super Aww. cute. And actually, ugh. Okay, so actually, I think I'm gonna remove the bottom and just and like, then just push it out like this. I guess that's one of the benefits of the 3D molds too, right? What? That you can kind of do that, like you can push them through. Oh, we can do that with the. But not with these guys. No, not with these, but with many of the molds from the back bomb press, we can. Uh, but one of the benefits of 3D molds is the choice options, like you right. have much more variety. So I'll do special editions. Like for the holidays or for a specific holiday of the year. Oh, oh yeah, it wasn't filled enough. Yeah, and also I kind of like yeah squished it. Yeah, try again and let's weigh this one and see how much it weighs. Then this way you can try try it on the scale. Let's weigh this and not break it. So I have a hundred and twenty eight grams. Okay. Oh, I see what you're doing. And now fill to about one hundred and twenty eight to one hundred and thirty grams, and you should have a better result. So it's like just you can minus. pack it a little bit, like take your hand and smooth it out, like push it with a couple fingers, like don't okay. smash it in, but yep. like you can push it down a little bit. I still have my mask on, but it's fine. Easy. So 128. Oh, still have more room. There we go. Okay, take the top part of the mold and smash it in. Let me show you a trick, okay? Okay. Where, there's a technique for that. Uh, yeah, all of it. The <laughs> so line use it. and... Yeah. It's much better than when you do, do this. You that makes like sense. There you go. <laughs> all right, technique. Oh, it's so slippery. Yeah. Oh, nice. Look at that. Looks good. Nice detail. It's much better than the first batch. <laughs> Okay, I'm pulling the sleeve up and I guess I'll go in the other direction. Oh, there we go. Voila! Look! Oh, it's, it's so perfect! Cute. It's so cute. 
And you see this, this mold has details on both sides, while this one is only like ice cream shaped and flat on the bottom. Gotcha. That's actually really nice. Yeah, it's cute. And you could use this with a moon press as well, right? Yes. Oh, yes. This. Do you have a moon press? I do. Ooh, let's go get it. It's over in that box there. Perfect. Okay. So just yeah. fill it, pack it, and then I like to press it against the table. Yeah. But then you're, I don't know if you want to press on this table, but you can press it in your, there, in yeah. your hand, maybe. My, t my tables are stainless steel, so I can press on my tables, but I don't want to sand off. <laughs> And technically, I don't have to do it that full because. So, but depend, it depends on how much how tall you want, you it, want right? it to be. So you could put more or or leave it like that. I think we'll just leave it like that but for now. I hour. like to start like pushing it like against my hand, yeah, just to give it a little bit of a so that the powder doesn't all fall off. Yeah, and then let's mix it in here, bring it in the pan, and then press down and just unload it like you. Have you ever worked with moon presses for no nope. bombs? Oh, oh so I tried, but I wasn't but, very successful. Okay, I think that's enough. Okay. Now just look, just hold it like that. And then lift it. Just let lift and then press it down and lift. Press, press, press. Lift it. As it comes out, just lift it out and voila. Oh yay! It's yeah. so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring it closer to the camera. So people can see the little flower. Yay! Oh, that's yeah. so wonderful. This is a really good mix. Yeah. Yeah. So this one works really well here in Vancouver and with these types of molds. So we're going to save that one for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I think that's a better size. For I do like, too. If you were like wanting to make a whole line and resell them. Mm -hmm. And again, you can always fill on a scale. So you can weigh this bath bomb. And then when you make more and you, you're going to be able to label them to let's say I don't know maybe this is like 50 grams or something yeah. so you can like make sure that they're all equally sized I love it we're done <laughs> so we're done for today actually so we'll set these in Belinda's drying area yeah and we'll be back tomorrow to so test if they dried in Vancouver yes <laughs> now we're gonna go have fun in the rain yeah <laughs> and we are back it's actually been a couple days because mm -hmm. we've been busy Gallivanting. Yeah. <laughs> Visiting Vancouver, having fun. And Whistler. And getting ready for the conference. Uh, yes, and Whistler. So the bath bombs are completely hardened up. They are so nice. We're going to give you guys a closer look. Okay, so let's take a peek. What do you think? Ooh, nice and firm. And the scent is so nice. Mmm. Mm. Well, is that the <laughs> test? <laughs> yeah, well... When we press them with the bath bomb press, we can actually drop our bath bombs on the ground just to test and mm. they won't break. And these are really nice as well. The texture yeah. is like super firm, like you can press them. There's no no issues. Yeah, that's super good. And why don't you like check the one with the moon press? The definition of the design is so nice. Yeah, and it's not going anywhere either. Yeah, so these are really cute. Let's show let's show the diamond as well. Is it a diamond or more like yeah, a gem? Yeah, a gem. So these are these are the best for the 3D molds. This this formula worked really great. And then we were able to salvage the other one with these these molds. Which actually, where did you get these molds? I actually <laughs> they're I not found, they're they're not bath bomb molds. Dude. No, I actually found them in Value Village and like the little like kind of mishmash section um i just i had been using them as like <laughs> to measure Little, out yeah, measuring bowls yeah exactly so i would put like if i was putting like coffee in something i would put it in there and then you know put it into my cool. soap but yeah and, then we, through... and now they have an, a new purpose yes exactly <laughs> ding ding <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for coming and showing me and sharing me sharing with me this wonderful recipe because it and, really well. yeah, thank you so much for having me. I've been sleeping on her couch for the past <laughs> days. And it's been great. It's very comfortable. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> so thank you so much. It was fun, and we got to make bath bombs. I got to see her make soap, um, and we, uh, we went to Whistler and went to the spa, and and then she let me borrow her boyfriend, who took yeah. me on an amazing bike tour around Vancouver, uh, and then the um, what is it called the the 
Stanley the sea, Park. the sea, the seawall, the seawall, and Stanley Park, and East Vancouver, Vancouver. It was just amazing. So yeah, thank you of course. so much. <laughs> it was my pleasure. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for watching, and you can find some more details in the description box down below. Uh, don't forget to, to follow me on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. And you can find all of Belinda's social links right down here below as well. She's on TikTok and Instagram as well. And on YouTube, right? Yeah, I'm on YouTube. I'm going to be picking it up there a little bit more. Yay! Thank you so much <laughs> and see you. you soon. Bye! Bye.